welcome back to my channel. I'm Reese Desana Mom, and I'm just here to kind of give you some inside scoop on some terminology, some keys you may use, or some terms you just might hear when you're starting ultrasound. So let's start off with what is ultrasound? So um, that's sound waves with frequencies higher than the audible limit, which is what the human can hear. Some people have actually said they can hear a little bit of ringing in their ear, but most times you can't. And that is usually 20 kilohertz. So that's just the sound that helps us to get the image. Next up, what we have on the screen here is a mode or amplitude mode. Um, that's just the mode in ultrasound where we can measure velocity as far as direction, how high it's going, the amplitude. So you can see that green marking that's measuring that waveform is measuring the amplitude in that specific part of the heart, it looks like. If you could see at the top, it's kind of small, um, but that line is going through the heart, so the amplitude being measured is in one of the chambers in the heart. Um, so that's one view that we look at. Following that, we have M mode, which is also motion mode. Um, in this particular case, the line at the top of the screen is going through the mitral valve. Um, and I remember that because those waves you see down there kind of look like an M. Um, in this case, what we're looking at is basically the timing of each event. So when the mitral valve is opening, when the mitral valve is closing, um, if they are at all, and if there are any pathologies. So while we want to look at velocities and amplitude in the heart, we also want to look at the timing of each event to make sure that they're opening and closing on time. So I don't really have an image of the last mode, which is B mode, but B mode is basically just the image on the screen. So if you had just amplitude or A mode or just motion mode, you wouldn't get to see the structures on the screen. So what you guys are used to when you see the babies or the heart or the vessels, that's considered B mode. So let's get into some tools or instruments that we use as an ultrasound tech. So this is a cardiac transducer. Um, transducers usually convert pressure or brightness into electrical signal um, or vice versa because, you know, the signal has to go to the body and the body signal has to come back to the screen to create an image. So this is, like I said, a cardiac transducer, which is used for echocardiograms. It's the smallest transducer of them all, which is nice because it's lightweight and, you know, it doesn't cause that much harm to the wrist. Um, I'll show you an image coming up next of what an echo transducer looks like on the ultrasound screen. Each one is different. Echo transducers start at a point and then fan down all the way through the heart. So up next we have here a curved array transducer which you can already see is wider and larger than the cardiac transducer. This one is um, used mostly for abdominal studies or gynecological studies outside of transvaginal and everything like that. Um, and you can also see here, I'll point out because it's in the image, there is a line going down the handle of the transducer. All transducers have some form of indicator that shows you um, which direction should be pointing towards the patient's head or towards you depending on what scan you're doing, that indicator will let you know because otherwise your image will be backwards. <laughs> I've definitely done that before. So always look out for an indicator. As I said, it always looks different on different transducers, but on this one you can see here it looks pretty prominent. As you can see, um, this is an image that you would see using a curved array transducer, which is similar to the Echo, but if you look at the top, it has more of a curved top instead of a pointy top. So that's how you can tell the difference between a curved array and a cardiac transducer picture. So the last transducer that I'm going to be discussing today is a linear transducer. Um, there are transvaginal transducers and things like that, but these are the main three transducers that I wanted to discuss that I am using. Um, the linear transducer is used mostly for blood vessels, which are the arteries and the veins. Um, so if you go to a vascular lab or ultrasound lab, you will see them using um, a linear transducer. And if you kind of take a peek to the side, the left side of that transducer, 
you'll also see the indicator I was discussing in the curved array. So just keep an eye on that so you don't have a backwards image, you guys. So here is an image using a linear transducer, which is significantly different than the curved array and the echo. This one is linear. It goes straight across the screen, and of course, um, you can see the vessel that's in the center there, so it gets a pretty good image. So now we can kind of get into some ultrasound terminology, things you guys should know, words that we were taught in our very first semester. So this is a grayscale image of the liver. Um, grayscale just means black and white, basically. So the first word I wanted to discuss with you guys is gain. What gain is, is basically, um, it's a button on the ultrasound machine that you can rotate or turn, which amplifies the um, ultrasonic signal, which makes the image brighter. So you see the two of the same images, one has a lower gain, which is the one to the left, and the one to the right has a higher gain. You can see that it increased the brightness. Both of them aren't really good pictures. You're supposed to have a medium gray, but this is just to show you what gain does to the ultrasound image. So what you're seeing here is an image of the buttons that we use called time gain compensation, which you will hear TGC because nobody has time to keep saying time gain compensation but just so you know what it stands for. So those keys on the side um, adjust the brightness in certain sections of the screen. So where each button has an arrow, that would be where that button would adjust on the screen. You would need this sometimes because if you can't get a clear image or bowel gas is in the way, sometimes you need to darken out a blood vessel or darken one section to make it look better. Because at the end of the day, whatever you're trying to get an image of, you have to adjust brightness accordingly um, so you can see whatever pathology or lack thereof that there is. So that's what time gain compensation is. Most of the time you don't really have to adjust, but I definitely say in arteries and veins, you have to clear out that vessel sometimes. But you don't want to do it to the point where you're hiding pathology. It's just to um, prove your point and get an accurate image. So those super small cross looking things are called calipers. Calipers are just used to measure structures on the screen. So this looks like they're probably measuring a cyst like substance. Um, you would measure the kidney, you can measure the heart chambers, you can measure anything. But what you will be using to measure those are called calipers. So this one is pretty self explanatory, but I'll put it in anyway. The freeze button. The freeze button is after you've gotten your picture that you want, you freeze it so you can save it. And in this image, you will also see the trackball. The trackball is the yellow ball in the center where you can freeze the image. And then if you want to go back to like a part of the image that you have scanned before, you can cine loop back. And cine looping is just rolling that trackball back it kind of just saves many clips of the images that you're already taking when you scan. Don't worry guys, we are almost done. So one of the words I wanted to mention as well is the capture tool. The capture tool is just used to um, record clips of what's on the screen. So not only taking an image, but especially with the heart, if you want to record how the valves are opening and closing, you will use the capture tool. So last but not least, you all, we have Doppler. Um, Doppler is a test that's used to measure the amount of blood flow through the arteries and veins. Not only the amount, but the velocities of them. So what you can see here um, is a carotid artery. We place um, that angle correct in there and get the good image, turn on that color, turn on that Doppler, and that gives us what the velocities are um, and how the blood flow is. So if there was any stenosis, meaning narrowing of the vessel, we would see an increased velocity um, or anything like that. And sometimes it's used if people have stents or bypass surgery. Ultrasound is just so amazing. There are so many tools we can use um, to figure out pathologies in the body. I just love it. Now this is 
not all of the tools or terminology or anything. This is by far all of them. But I did want to give you some basics and idea um, of what you're getting into, some words you'll hear. I hope this has helped you guys tremendously. I love you, Sano Gang. Have a good day. Bye.